<laughs> Welcome back to the number one podcast in the world. We're your hosts, Chase Damore. And Gabrielle Moses. And today we are going to get back to our roots. We are going to talk about the sweet, the innocence, the do's, the don'ts, the... The, the trials, the tribulations of dating. dating. <laughs> That's what we're going to talk about today. Because with social media, it's changed the game for dating. It's a little bit different now. It's a little bit easier to become an FBI investigator and, you know, know absolutely everything about the person that, you know, you're supposedly going out on a date with. It's a little bit harder to hide shit and whatnot whenever you're, you know, trying to date someone. So... Let's talk about it. On Let's social media, it. for a guy, when a girl posts anything with, like, a yacht, doesn't it make you, like, a big question mark? We talked about yachts and girls before yeah. in past episodes, right. but what makes you do a double take on a girl if you see them posting a certain thing on Insta? Yeah, I, th- I think it all just it varies. It depends. I think that, you know, there, I used to have, like, this, this, this philosophy if, like, a girl had linkedin bio uh her snapchat um or anywhere in tulum in any of her stories like I, or miami at that i'd write them off in, initially because i think that here's the thing is like when i was 19 and 20 you know we were working like you know real jobs and influencing wasn't as big as it is now and i think that at the time it's like you think about the cost of things a lot more mm-hmm. and so it's like I was working a hard job and the hard job paid more than most easier jobs. Mm-hmm. Back when I was, you know, working, most girls worked at like what, a coffee stand, a restaurant. Yeah. You know, they were working like these minimal jobs. It's like, so how are you telling me that not only are you paying for your school, but now you can pay to go to fly across the country because I live in Seattle, mm-hmm. across the country to Miami. And now you can pay for a night in the fountain blue and you can pay for a day on a boat, two days on a boat, and you're in mm-hmm. club space until, you know, Five in the morning. Five o'clock in the morning. You know what I mean? So, yeah. you know, I that obviously is going to be a red flag. And I think it affects a lot of guys, you know. Honestly. Yeah, it has to. Because, I mean, also the expectations these days because of social media, I feel like are so high. Like Valentine's Day wasn't too, too long ago. The f- rose bouquets, like the trend that all these girls would show up these hundreds of dollars worth of roses and whatnot, and it was like a big competition, like who would get the biggest thing for Valentine's Day? Right, and then uh, think about how that affects masculinity towards like gr- guys that are working like honest jobs, like yeah. bro, like I can't buy my girl a thousand dollars worth of roses and bouquets and chocolates. That means literally nothing because the roses are gonna die in a couple of days, and she's gonna eat the chocolates, yeah. the ones she likes anyways. Uh-huh. But instead, I'm taking that money and I gotta pay for us to have a lights on to, no, exactly i'm saving up so i can take her um to a spa for her birthday you mm-hmm. know like so i can you know buy her a, a car so i can pay gas you know buy food but mm-hmm. because it's in comparison to these guys and most of the time it's either you know pro athletes big influencers yeah i think athletes. influencers are making it way harder to just normalize certain things in relationships and dating because these influencers are doing like crazy stuff. Like you see these like birthday dinners or whatever, like Alex Earl and Braxton, um, like what he did for her birthday, it was crazy. He hired a private chef, decorated his whole apartment, which is adorable and it's so, so cute. I'm glad I dodged the bullet with Alex Earl, by the way. Oh yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute. but it's just like it's making these things normal and like normalizing all these crazy things like spending thousands and thousands of dollars which i'm not knocking it if you can do it and if you have the money and the resources to do it go ahead spoil spoil your significant other but for everyone who's just like sitting at home and watching this stuff like i don't know it makes these expectations that are almost too hard to even you know achieve for anyone you know yeah, and I, and I think that it, you you attract the wrong type of person, and I and I want everybody you know who is looking for an answer. It's like, am I doing the right thing because I am not spending money on X, Y, and Z? It's just like I have friends that spend all of their money on girls and blow it, and I have friends that refuse to spend money on girls. You do. You really do have you both. Know. <laughs> and I see the perspective. And both of them, both of them, they pull. Mm-hmm. They still get, but the quality of girls that they are pulling are, are night and day. Mm-hmm. If I talk about, let's talk, we'll, we'll categorize them like this. We'll talk about friend A. Friend A is, abs- we'll just use A for absolutely, is absolutely against spending money on girls. Friend B is 
but she's hot. We'll just use B for but she's hot. So we're going to spend all the money. So friend A, absolutely not, is attracted to a lot of different various baddies. But here's the thing. All these girls have low expectations. Like they're, he knows that he, that they go out to eat, the bill's getting split. If he, you know, he's not picking them up. They're Ubering to meet him. This is friend A. Absolutely not spending any money on this girl. What she's getting is my time. And you're dropping your mouth. You're dropping your mouth. But, like, let me tell you about friend A. Friend A finds quality attractions. These are the plus sides. These are quality women who have no expectations, who are self-sufficient, who love themselves, and are successful in their own right. And they choose to be on that date with that person because they have great conversations. It's not anything fake. On the other end, we've got friend B. But she's hot. The quality of girl is probably much more attractive than friend A. I will grant it. But the quality of character is... This is friend B is the one that's like, oh, bro, she's pissed off at me because we went to Christian Dior and I only bought her one four thousand dollar bag, not two. Friend B is like, oh, she didn't come and see me this weekend because the only flights that were available were spirit and she can't be caught dead on a spirit flight. OK, yeah, you know? that's true. Friend B is like, but she's so hot that I decided to I flew myself to Tulum, flew who to, flew her to Tulum on a PJ, put her in an Uber black to come to my mansion where she also stayed. And now we got private security and all this and that to make it look like it more than what it is. You know, so it's like they both pull. Friend B probably gets the better looking girls, but friend A is getting the higher quality girls. That makes sense? Yeah. No, that makes sense. I mean, here's the thing about that situation. Friend B, who spends all the money on all the girls, you're right, is probably attracting the girls for the wrong reasons. But friend A, who won't even pay for anything for a girl, like splitting meals. Okay, I get it if you've been like on a bunch of dates. You're obviously, I don't know, it almost sounds like you're in it for the wrong reasons, though. With friend A, <laughs> you're just, you know, making, being friendly, friendly with someone just for that reason. You know, you're not going to get like, I don't even know if it would be about quality time. Oh, it just depends on what you look at it, Gab. It's like, <clears throat> it's like, I would say friend A is the more attractive of the friend. Yeah. Friend B is probably less attractive. So what do they use to cope with? One uses money. money okay. And one uses his, what he was given. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure, like, I don't have to, t- you probably know which friends I'm referring to. But like. We like both of them. We both think that they have great personalities. They're both pretty funny. They both have a lot going for each one of them, but mm-hmm. one uses money as a coping mechanism, whereas the other one doesn't need to do that. And I want to lean towards like guys who see the bouquet of roses that we were mentioning and the yeah. this, like you don't need to do that. You I really don't, don't think you need to do that. And I and I want to say about this is like you remove money as a factor. Now that's where you look at A and B. Mm-hmm. It's like you remove the outlying factor, which is money. And it's just like now you look at the quality of girls. Mm-hmm. No, you're right. Like you have to be there and in the relationship for the right reason, you know? All right. And I would and I would say like, you know, you were saying like, well, is it a red flag that they're shaking ass in Miami? Yes, because it's like I know that you working at Applebee's did not pay for your flight and your stay and your boat in Miami. Yeah. So somebody's paying for that. Mm -hmm. Now it's like, well, who's paying for it? Oh, I saved up this and that, or I have a friend that's doing it. Why is your friend doing it? As as far as I'm concerned, and I'm friends with friend B over here, the butt, she's hot girl. Mm -hmm. And everything he does, he has one thing in mind. It's just like, you're going there to smash. You're not spending, you're investing money into this girl. And I'll, and I'll, and I'll leave it here. It's kind of like how friend A would never sleep with an escort. Friend B would, because here's the thing. It's like, he looks at it like this. He's like, if I'm going to spend money on a restaurant and a boat and a flight and a hotel, why not just spend less money, get the escort of the equally hot girl, spend the money to sleep with her then and there, and I still get what I want out of that. You know what I mean? So it's like, realistically... How are you separating? The quality of the yeah, like how are you separating? Like what is an the escort? intention? Exactly, what is an escort? An escort is basically just you do um, sexual acts and and no, that's called a prostitute. Well, I'm using a different word. Yeah, oh, okay, it's the same thing though. <laughs> but like you're doing sexual acts in the uh, for money for money, right? So it's like, well, if you are electing to get flown out 
he's paying for that. You're electing to let him pay for your hotel. You're electing to get in the restaurant. In your head, all I have to do is sleep with this guy, and I get all of that. Well, what's the difference there? That's a fair point, no? That's a, yeah. That's, yeah. And I feel like those types of relationships that are purely based off of, like, oh, what can you buy me? What can you get me? Or, like, what more can you do with your money for me? I don't know if it'll stand the test of time, you know? It will never stand the test of time because here's the, here's the thing, and somebody said this, it's just like, <clears throat> here's the thing. I had a friend recently, he was talking about how, like, men age. Men age differently than women, obviously. Men grow wiser and, like, you know, they, they get... You don't think women get wiser? No, women women get wiser. I'm not saying that... They okay. Don't know, but I'm saying that typically men aren't the wisest when they're younger. Oh, so they are maturing. They are yeah. get, getting wiser, not yeah. they are wiser okay. than women. I'm not saying that. I'm saying <laughs> way you it men right. get wiser with age, as do mm-hmm. women, but women start out pretty wild, yeah. I would say. But pretty men, mature. Pretty mature. Like, yeah, men yeah, yeah. get wiser, mm-hmm. you know? No, I get what and, you're um, as they get wiser, they become, I feel like, more attractive towards women because it's like you're more mature, you handle things better. Yeah. You have more money. Mm-hmm. You have more, you can think better, mm-hmm. you know? So that's more attractive. So it kind of negates, like, the younger men, mm-hmm. you know, who are also looking at this. And so what does that do for the older men is, like, what do they want? They want to go back and they want to get the younger women. Mm-hmm. So that's why you see, like, typically speaking in like these age different relationships it's usually the guy that's older right yeah so in some cases you know the guy can be younger but like whatever but like typically the older guy wants the younger girl because the youth is attractive to them mm. i guess yeah and i mean so, my parents are 10 years apart 10 years that's, so that's a decade yeah and they lied to me about how they met for the longest time how they meet at a party but growing up, my parents always said, oh, we saw each other at the gym and we met at the gym. Mom, Dad, why did you lie to me about that? It's not that big of a deal. You guys got probably sloshed one night and that's how you guys started dating. Like, it's fine. It's not that big. You've met my parents before. They literally lied. I didn't know that they met well, at a most party. The hostile household I've ever been in. Yeah, my family likes to roast each other very much so. What did my dad say to you about me? About my terrible driving. athlete, terrible driver. She works hard though. Yeah, that's what my dad said. I was like, Dad. I then mean, you're calling him fat. He's like, I'm not so fat. Dad, I work no, hard. My dad used to be a bodybuilder, and so he is short but like big. To be fair, for 66, my dad's in really good shape and is pretty strong. But a lot of that muscle is just translated into um, a belly, <laughs> and so. Kind of I'm me and my it. sisters and my mom kind of bully my dad into saying, are you going to have twins pretty soon? Like, are you going to get back into the gym? Yeah, we need to actually bring Cassie on the podcast, your little sister, yeah. to talk about what is it like growing up in that household with Gab? Because Gab we'll plays the innocent Cassie. role, but Gab it was, I was, e- the innocent was equally going at them as much as they were going at each other. It's like I was sitting in a house, and it felt like everybody was just sitting at the dinner table, and it was like one of those things where you're just, hmm, um, you're looking kind of fat today. Maybe you should put on some makeup. Oh, uh, wow, that's crazy because uh, you're looking extra fat and your outfit sucks. Um, and then the person over here is not saying anything. You're being awfully quiet. We're going to attack you too. Your breath smells bad. That's what it was like. And I'm just sitting there like, please don't come for me. I'm not secure no enough for this. Cassie tried roasting you. Oh, I, and I gave it to her right back. <laughs> My little sister tried going at and I told her, like, I'm the kraken. I'm the last guy you ever want to talk shit to. <laughs> Like, I have no boundaries. How, see, and that's why sometimes whenever I say stuff, it I'll sounds attack like... No, I'll attack. Because I've said stuff to you before, and, like, I mean it as a joke, but then you'll take it the wrong way. But it's literally because I grew up with my family just roasting us nonstop. Like, we were just all brutal to each other. Sometimes a little bit too brutal. But anyways, we are talking about the age gap between my parents and my parents lying about how they met. Yes, they met at a party. My mom's roommate at the time... I honestly don't even know if my mom actually had a roommate at the time, because at that time my mom was 28 or 27, so I don't think she had a roommate. This is the story. Her roommate slash friend or whatever had a party one night. My dad was one of the people who was invited, and that's how they started actually dating. But they had seen each other at the gym, so yeah, that's how they started dating. And then a year later, they got engaged and then got married and then three years later after knowing each other 
I was born. Well, I mean, like, that's a better story than by how I freaking met you. <laughs> how did, oh, how we met? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a great story. You used to watch me on YouTube. You're, you're my fan. <laughs> you were. Okay, well, let's get this straight here. First and foremost, like, I went to school to study relationship therapy. So I was really inv invested into relationship stuff. I was learning. And you happened to run one of the biggest relationship channels on YouTube. And I would do dating advice on mine. That you stole from the internet. I did research. And then you would thumbnail it with some sort of eggplant emoji. emoji. I didn't make and those. And enhance your eyeballs to make them almost as blue as this background. I didn't make those thumbnails with the crazy emojis. That was somebody else. And then you would market it to uh, old Man. men. <laughs> And that's how you built an audience, and somehow it popped up on my For You page. Hey, it got millions of views, and I, I was getting roasted in the comments. Pretty much, I got big on YouTube for getting flamed because my dating advice was just made no sense. It did. In fact, I'm going to play the clip right here of when I tried to buy the YouTube channel from your ex-boyfriend. Listen, guys. Have little, we talked about this? Before? I don't think we've ever talked about it. In fact, I'm going to put the clip right here. Um, yeah, we'll edit the clip right here of his response to this cause question. But uh, basically, I reached out to ex-boyfriend number one, who you blew up on this YouTube channel with, who Gabrielle never talks about and doesn't like to talk about. But I will talk about him because... <laughs> I offered to buy this YouTube channel as a gift to Gabrielle. It was very thoughtful. Because I'm like, you know, this is your channel. You built this channel. Mm -hmm. Like, whether it makes money or not. DraftKings is bringing you only the best. Classics like slots, roulette, and poker. And we like to have a lot of fun. So if you go and download the DraftKings Casino app and use code UNSCRIPTED, you can actually get an instant match for whatever you're playing. Up to $100. All you have to do is bet $5 instant. Casino app. If I bet $100, they're going to bet me $100? Yep, they will match it if you use code unscripted whenever you download the app. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. 21 and over. Physically present in Connecticut, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, West Virginia only. Void in Ontario. Eligibility and other restrictions apply. One per opt-in new customer. $5 wager required. Max $100 in casino credits awarded which require one-time playthrough within 168 hours see terms at casino.draftkings.com slash promos restrictions apply oh, but this is what his response was he said that he wanted x amount of dollars for this channel because it was a growing channel it was doing this and that and so i was like all right fair so i put him in a business meeting because he thinks he's smarter than me he's not smarter than me i put him in there with my lawyer and my manager and we offered to buy this channel from said individual and I said, first of all, I would like to say I told you not to even entertain him. I didn't, but you know, you know, some of us like to watch the world burn, and I'm, you know, if it was on fire and I have a water bottle, I would drink the water bottle, you know, <laughs> and that's where I'm at. And so, said boyfriend number one, uh, his rebuttal wanted a million dollars in my car, my orange Tesla, for this YouTube channel, and I go. Okay, let me see what this channel's worth. So he pulls up the analytics. It's losing X amount of followers per day. Mm -hmm. It's, it's like, just sitting there. It's sitting there. It's making, what, seven, six hundred, seven hundred dollars a month? On if residual. That, on residual of, of your videos. He's completely changed the channel. It's, that, it's a dead channel, right? right? And so I gave said person a very fair offer after he sent me this video. Um, and I said to him, listen, I will give you $25,000 up front. $25,000. That's more than the channel is going to make over the next four years. That's mm -hmm. four years of that channel sitting there. I'm going to give it to you up front. And I will give you ad revenue to up to $100,000. Yeah. So you are going to get $125,000 for a channel that's never going to make that money. And this person said, no, I will sit on it and reminisce on my glory days. Just that's so you can watch really the video. said. Oh. That's, it is what he said. It's, no, that is. And he said... And he said, he goes, I, and I want, um, he wanted the videos. He wanted the rights to the videos of you guys. Which, who cares? Yeah. Which, you care. Like, fine, you can it have would the never, rights. I would never want those videos to be deleted because right. those are my memories, too. He wanted the rights to the videos. I said, fine. He wanted uh, to be able to download them and keep them for a separate channel. I said, fine. 
Well, I don't even know what else he wanted for it. But I literally said fine to everything and offered him a fair price. And he said, he still said no to it. And now the channel just sits there. And it's basically like this dead channel that he's repurposed to him and his new girlfriend. And nobody it knows who It doesn't even get used. It doesn't even get used. And like, so. I, here, let me look up. I want to say it's been a year since anything was posted on that channel. I mean, I don't look at it, but like. It's actually, it's a, it's a very sad and it's an unfortunate thing. Yeah, and, because I wouldn't be here without that channel. You know, it's it's more of a memento at this point and i was gonna take it and just kind of like not really even rebrand it just kind of give it back to to moses here and let her do her lifestyle stuff on it which yeah. is uh, because it was, she was the face of the channel and i think that you know, he's, he's an immature prick and uh you know wait i can't find the channel jack and jc oh he changed the name of it again this channel doesn't have any content hmm Oh wait, that's so weird on the home button. Oh, does that mean? Oh yeah, yeah. It's a it's a muted channel. So like, if I'm in the wrong, guys, let me know in the comment section if I'm in the wrong. But I think that was a very fair deal. I'm giving him four x oh, his revenue. Oh, he changed the whole channel again. Yeah, you know, this guy's just kind of just like blowing it. And, and and let me tell you what he says he he does with the channel. But while we we got an audience, he told me what he does is he has a business that he runs through the channel where basically he uses that channel as an example to go and scam other YouTube channels into how to grow bigger. Yeah. He uses the channel as an example on how to grow a YouTube channel. So basically what he does is he's taking this channel that he used this face for to grow to scam people into growing a bigger Wait, I'm so confused. So I was trying to not only do the world of justice by getting rid of this guy, but I was also trying to... Um, yeah, it's been two years since any video was uploaded. But and it apparently, looks like, like, there's companies that take the... Because the, what he was trying to say is, like, he was trying to say the channel makes, like, six or seven grand a month off of some company called Jelly Smack that... Which isn't true, like, at all. Which isn't... He was trying it to say... doesn't even happen. Yeah, we, I was working with the company, and so I literally reached out to the company. I was like, did you ever even sign my old channel without my consent? Yeah. They go, no, we never worked with that channel. Well, we knew it was we knew it was Cap, which is why when yeah. we pulled up the channel, we're not stupid. He thought he was just yeah. going to use screenshots and this and, and then that. you were like no i want to no. live share the we screen. live shared the screen and had him pull everything up and then he looked really stupid on the live share because yeah. like bro like come on yeah it's so sad because this channel is just sitting here and it's just losing subs right so like it literally almost had it did have two million over two million yeah. subs now it's down to 1.69 one of the biggest couple channels probably ever on youtube and uh, and that's that's saying something so it's like if you have a chance to revive this channel and do something with it like i would have just took the money like bro like we don't know what you make i don't know if you yeah. still made money off it. like you're gonna have a chance to make a big chunk of money and 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 revive something you know what mm -hmm. i mean and this was over a year and some change ago now that mm -hmm. i offered this and like the offer is still on the table if he wants to sell the channel i will still buy it but like here's the thing like it's bro you're not gonna get a half a million dollars in my orange tesla oh and whenever he made the video channel. too he was like oh say hi to the family and at the end of the video we're gonna play the clip again Five hundred thousand, and that's where that's about what I was thinking would be fair. But let me know what you think. <laughs> um, uh, once again, happy to set up a call. Uh, if you'd like to throw your Tesla on there as a little cherry on top. I couldn't tell what model it was. Looked like the newest version, but I uh, couldn't tell if it was the 100D or not. If so, maybe we can talk about putting that in there too. I don't know, we can trade. Um, but um, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Um, tell Gabrielle and the fam I said hi. Um, let me know, peace out very thoughtful of you to even do that but at this point i don't even it's not worth entertaining it's not him, you got your own all. channel and you it's nothing. worth it to leave that all in you know the past and as long as the old videos are up because like my high school graduations there my um prom is on that channel my valedictorian speech when i was graduating high school is literally on that channel too um college stuff my spring break in college like my first spring break is on that channel. Um, there's like big moments on that. And like, I wouldn't want that to get deleted either. So I don't know. Like it's a like sad, sweet thing, but it's whatever. Yeah, you know, but you know, anyways, moving on from that. <laughs> moving on from that. Let's talk about some dating horror stories. So you guys know I do the in the DM segment, which don't worry guys, it's not the end of this podcast, but I have a lot of stories to share with you guys today. So let me just pull one of them up because people have 
bad dating stories. And gosh, I don't even know how some people do this, but um, one story that we had someone send in, a while ago, I agreed to meet a Tinder date at a local bar. Things were all right, but I could very much so tell she was loaded prior to, she was on something prior to the arrival. We had a couple drinks. She made several comments about how cold it was in this bar. Granted, I'm wearing a t-shirt and jeans, so I assume she's one of those perpetually cold women with poor circulation. She excuses herself to the restroom. Half an hour goes by, then nearly a full hour goes by. And I figure one of the two things happen. Either she ditched me or needs help in the restroom. So I politely asked one of the female bartenders to go check on her politely. Turns out she had an OD in the bathroom, Sur surgical tubing around her arm and everything. I was heavily questioned by the police and even put in a squad car until the bartenders vouched for me and I wasn't tied with the drug case and had nothing to do with it. She ended up passing, oh, I did not read this full thing. She ended up passing later that night, definitely the worst date ever. How best do we part? <laughs> That's tough. That's crazy. Um, well, from my from my I didn't read the last part of that until I just yeah, read like, that. I'm like, yeah, you gotta just put me in a on a dark side. Like, I, like I'm supposed to be like the comedic relief here, and like, I don't I don't find this very funny. Like, that's crazy. I mean, that's a date you'll never forget. Well, I mean, like she'll never forget it either. Apparently, <laughs> too soon. Too soon. Uh, <laughs> too too soon. I well, mean, shoot, if you need help. How did he say you met this girl? Tinder. Tinder. Tinder dating stores. I actually found a bio on Tinder the other day. So. Oh, yeah, talk about that real quick. Lighten the mood a little bit, please. This girl, she posted on her Tinder bio, I was, I was dead. It literally says, uh, if you're built like Chase the Moore. You can run through me or something like that. It says, uh, I gotta we'll blur out her face, but. Yeah, I'm going <laughs> to definitely, definitely got to blur that. Here, you texted it to me the other day. Oh, did I text it to you? Yeah, I don't have Yeah. Anymore. My thing. It was funny. All right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It says... I'll put it on the screen. She'll put it on the screen. Yeah. It says, uh, if you're built like Chase Moore, you can rip my heart out and I'd still want you. <laughs> One of my friends sent me this in a different state. Like, we're not even close. Like, yeah. <laughs> having that in your Tinder bio is wild. That's like, funny, though. Be careful. I always promise girls two things that are going to happen. Um, I know. Your heart will get broke and your back will get broke. Whatever order you want that to happen in first, you let me know. That'll be your decision, but both will happen. Oh my goodness. Chase, have you ever been on a Tinder date? A Tinder date? Oh, no, yeah. no, no, no. I don't think you I don't even Tinder. think I've ever had a Tinder. <laughs> like, I'll be honest with you. Like, I feel like Tinder is one of those things where it's like you kind of just go on there for hookups, no? I don't know. I've never had a dating app. Tinder. I think Hinge is a little bit like, like less raunchy. Yeah. You but, think? I don't know. Like, uh, Tinder. Raya. Is, Raya, I got denied from Raya. They said, you ain't famous enough, little bro. Well, there's a lot of normal people on Raya. Raya is like a very exclusive dating app that you have to get like approved to be on and you have to pay like 20 bucks a month or something. They just hide behind the world exclusive to make people feel more important to get on there. Shoot. Like, bro, you're on Raya? Like, I've never heard of you, bro. You work at Taco Bell. No, there's like, I'm telling you, there's like normal people on That's Raya. what I'm saying. Like, you just get lucky if you get accepted. Like, you have to have so, you have to have so many references. They use that as like a bragging right. Like, I'm on Raya. Like, they bro. do. People will literally out here in California. Yeah, I'm on like, Raya. Like, bro, I just drove through Starbucks and you had even my coffee last week. How the fuck are you on Raya? <laughs> are you, oh, well, I was partner of the quarter. Yeah, two years ago. I then exactly. put you on Raya, little bro. Yeah, that's crazy. Here's another good dating story that I have, though. Someone entirely different turned up on the date. It seemed like he had accidentally uploaded photos of his younger, far hotter brother by mistake. He then got annoyed whenever I asked if his brother was free that night. You know, that's how my grandma and my grandpa met. What? I never said this, sorry. Oh. No? Well, I found out that my grandpa, he's actually from Nebraska. Never been to Nebraska, so I've, I've been learning a lot about What, like Omaha? Omaha, yeah, I've learned a lot about my family history recently. I thought they were from Portland originally. And uh, my grandma tells the story infamously that when they were in high school, went to high school together, high school sweethearts, my grandpa is an identical twin. And uh, basically, um, they're identical, but they still had like their own unique look, right? And so, and so let's just say. So not identical. 
No, they're identical, but you know, like one twin grows the hair oh, out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're saying. The other one keeps it short. I thought you were saying they still looked different enough. Okay. Yeah, they I get have like their saying. own looks, but yeah. they're identical twins. And uh, my mom's also a twin. It was just very funny. But, anyways, so, you know, they go, they're in high school. Let's just say twin number one is my grandpa, twin number two is his brother. So, my grandpa, uh, or my grandpa's brother, asked my grandma on a date. My grandma says yes. Later in that day, my grandpa asked my grandma on the same date. And she says yes, because she preferred my grandpa. So she told the other, my grandpa's brother, that she was sick and she couldn't go out that night. And so they went on the date. My grandpa picked her up, went back to his house. He's like, you want to come in and you know say hi to my folks or whatever. That's what they called him back then. She goes, yeah, sure. So she walks in there and she sees... The other one. The brother is sitting on the couch. And she goes, uh, my grandpa goes, yeah, this is my, my brother, Ron. You say hi. And my brother and his brother gets up and goes, yeah, we've met. And goes, storming upstairs all pouting. No <laughs> way. My grandpa went on a date with her. And, and then just, she said no to the... Yeah, it was just like... Did she not know that they were twins? No, I think this was like still pretty new in school. She, oh, so she was like the yeah, new kid. Yeah, just moved from oh. Nebraska is what I mean, oh. you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, yeah. She, didn't, she didn't put two and two together, and, and you know what I mean? So it is what it is, fair play. They were together since they were 14, and here we are. Uh, How know, many years? They were together 50 years. 50. Actually, no, she tells the story. They were together 49. 49. And my grandpa used to infamously say this thing. He says uh, he promised her 50 years. It's the only promise he ever broke there because he passed away on the 49th year. Very sad story. But he used to say all the time, like, I promise you 50 years. And when we get to 50, I'll uh, reevaluate the situation and I'll let you know. <laughs> yeah, but you have me for 50 years. You used to always say that. Should, my grandma says all the time, the only promise he ever broke there was, was he got to 49. And then he never, he never got to that 50 mark. So RIP to, to Grandpa Don. But, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's always a, a funny story to hear that one. So. That's a funny way to meet. <laughs> Just you get the wrong twin. Oopsies. Oops. 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 You turn one down, but you you got 49 years with the other one. Yeah. Crazy, crazy. Okay, here's another good dating story. Went on five dates with this lady. On the fifth date, she admitted that she had two kids. I let it go. Still was interested. Then... I let it go is insane. <laughs> that sounds like the girl on uh, The New Love is Blind, the one that says she looks like Megan, Megan Fox. Fox. <laughs> yeah, I knew you were going to say that. I mean... Okay, to be fair, I think she does look like Megan Fox. A year on drugs. Whatever you're smoking, send that my way. It's just the bottom half of her face that does it. That girl looked nothing like Megan I Fox. I think her eyes are like Megan Fox. Because she got blue eyes okay. and dark hair. Megan I Fox is blonde. I think it looks like Megan Fox a little bit. Hell no. I see Megan Fox with a that. <laughs> Oh my god. That guy does not look like Megan Fox. What? And that other dude that you that other guy that was on that Love is Blind, he I'm pretty sure is a serial movie. killer. And then the other guy trying to date the like, bro, I don't know what the hell was going on season six of Love is Blind, but y'all need to figure that shit out. Don't call me. I ain't here to help. You're not here to save the day. Do not call me Love is Blind season six. Yeah. I am retired. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm gonna start over with the story because we got sidetracked. Oh, yeah. Okay, went on five dates. On the fifth date, she admitted she had two kids. I let it go and was still interested. She also then admitted she was still married i was shocked and disgusted i said that what the heck was she doing this was all wrong she replied i can leave him for you i was so nauseated that she even said that to me you would probably just do the same thing to me i just left i would leave him for you you know it's crazy because like it's like i don't i've heard like worse than that you've heard worse oh, yeah i have a friend Who's like a pretty? Why are you looking at your armpit like that? <laughs> Anyways, continue with your story. You have a friend. You like that hair? Yeah, nice armpit hair. It's Thanks for that. showing it off. Been working on the 26 years. Oh my gosh. Anyways, Anyways. Your story. Uh, I have a friend who saw a girl on Instagram, linked up with her, ended up smashing, and then the next day her boyfriend came into town. And was a big fan of said influencer, and he went and took a picture with him and everything and was cool with him. And the girl had to completely pretend like she never met this person, whereas the night before she was getting her back blown out by him. It's a cruel world that we live in. These Jeez. women and clout, man, it's insane. They'll do it for the attention. Yeah, so like I feel in that particular story, um, I would tell bro, listen, uh, if you are in a situation where she's saying that to you, wait until the next attractive person or more successful person or whatever comes around, she's probably going to be telling him the same thing. So, you know what I mean? It's an eye for an eye. Nothing, everything comes with something. Nothing's for free. So, I mean, like, if that's the quality of girl that you are attracting, that's the quality of girl um, that you're going to keep around in your life. So, 
I would break up with them immediately. Get rid of that person. Like, yeah, like, that's toxic. I, I always can't be say, loyal. Yeah, I always say, like, I would rather somebody be loyal than to love me. You can hate me, but if you're loyal to me, like, here's the thing between love and loyalty. It's like, you can love somebody and still hurt them. Yeah. But if you're loyal to, loyal to them. I've heard you say that. It doesn't matter if, if you hate them or you're mad at them, you're still loyal at the end of the day. Yeah. You know I mean? Do you think loyalty is, like, one of the biggest aspects you look for? That's the only aspect I look for. I don't give a fuck if you love me. You don't have to love me. I like. I mean, I'm not saying like you would never love me, but like if you come to me and be like, "I love you so much," it doesn't mean as much as like I'm loyal. That's fair. Like that, yeah, it just, it loyalty just, it's is very important. It's a different meaning. Yeah, no, it's true. That's true. Okay, another crazy dating story. Last year, I went on a date with a guy I met online. He seemed really nice. We exchanged messages for a few weeks before we arranged a date. He was a manager at a construction company. He had a house, a car, dog, allotment, whatever. His profile said he was in his mid-30s. We arranged to meet at a bar halfway between us, and I was excited. It was so bad. He was easily mid-50s. I refuse to believe he was between, even been in his 30s in the past decade. But it got so much worse. I'm pretty sure he was in a cult. I've dealt with anti-vaxxers before, fine, whatever. You respect my right to choose to have a vaccine or not. But this guy was another ball game. He didn't believe in medicine. He told me about how proud he was that his mom died of cancer. She didn't even try and get treatment. He told me that if a bone broke, he would get it he wouldn't get it fixed and it would just let it heal on its own. He was all about natural selection and how medicine was preventing that. So the world was becoming populated with weaker people. Then there's the whole water thing. He didn't use tap water because it's poisonous. Instead, every two weeks he drove hundreds of miles with some kind of tank to transport water from a well to his home. And he thought I was crazy for using a Brita filter. Bro sounds like he's woke. <laughs> Bro, bro's one of those woke people. This is worse than the tarot card girl I was with. Uh, I would say, um, you know, I mean, like, I, I'm technically an anti-vaxxer. I never never did that. So, I mean, um, you know. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I think everyone can have their own opinions have on your own things. Opinions. Do what, what you want, what you will. But the water and letting your mom die of cancer? Yeah, you know what? Like, I'm That's always going to play the, the guy's side on this hand. I'm going to be like, look. You're going to play his side. Yeah, I'm going to play his side. His maybe. mom died of cancer. From a Brita filter. Not from the, no. She just didn't get help. What? Yes, cancer treatment is literally, you're shooting poison into your body, but you're targeting that poison towards, you know, the bad stuff to yeah. let you live. Uh, Well, I mean. Would you not get cancer treatment? Um, I wouldn't be drinking from a Brita filter. Jesus. Be for real. I mean, I don't know. That's like, I don't, I don't really know how to like, because like he's using a life in his defense. And so it's a little bit different. Like, yeah. That's the only, like, I can't, I can't argue. If he says like his mom died of cancer because of this, why? And like, who Maybe am I? that's why he's so crazy. Right. Like, I can't, of... I can't be like, oh, bro, you're fully, like, I can't tell you where your mom got cancer from. I can say that it's a fair defense. It's a fair defense. Like, I don't like this because of this. Like, I mean, it's a fair defense. Whether she thinks he's a nutcase or not, he probably is a nutcase. But who's to say she's not a nutcase? Because you see things in the light that you choose to see things in. You read text in the context of whatever motion that you are in. So it's like, yeah, you know true. what I mean? <laughs> that's true that's true for yeah. every argument there's a re rebuttal so i mean I don't, I don't know it just depends on how you look at it and that's also like here's the thing with dating is this it all is depicted and on you know i feel like they say opposites attract which i think that they do i think you balance each other out but it's also at the end of the day you have to have some similarities to make the make it work it. work you know yeah. what i mean because if you're like clashing all the time you gotta find mutual ground somewhere no exactly that's true you know, you can't just be arguing nonstop. Yeah, so if you got an anti-vaxxer and you accept that he's an anti-vaxxer, then you need to accept the fact that he's an anti-vaxxer and that his opinions are not going to align with yours. Now, if you are going to be the one to say, like, this was a horrible date, this was this or that, because of his reasoning for being anti-vaxxer and he doesn't believe in this and drinking this and that and the fourth, it's just like, you agreed to that. So maybe you should stop hiding initial attraction Mm -hmm. and varying outlying factors to make it make sense for you because mm -hmm. then you're going to get stuck with situations like this where now he doesn't want to see you because you have a brita filter yeah you know what i mean that's interesting i mean everyone can do whatever they want to do i think that 
That's really interesting Tinder date. Like well, Tinder dates are always horror stories. Wasn't there like the Tinder swindler for a bit? Yeah, who was just stealing my hundreds queen, of thousands. My enemies are after me. I need you to send me thirty thousand dollars right I now. I don't know how people fell for that. They multiple people, bro. Bro is the ultimate playboy. This man had women sending him money to go on dates with other women, and then those women he went on a date with sending him money to go on dates with other women, and so, he had like this this he was a pyramid, pyramid scheme. scheme. Yeah, of of women. And he was living a luxury life off of the dollars of other women. It's insane. Kind of like how the one dude who stole all the money from you is living a luxury life off of your penny. <sighs> we don't even want to bring that up. <laughs> we do not want to bring that up. Well, I think we should end with a little crazy ex story from you. You Perfect. have so many. You have so, Perfect. so many. Perfect. Let me tell you about another crazy ex story. So, I always tell these stories. I never know what to expect. My crazy ex-girlfriend. So, let me tell you about the time that this girl was so insecure and I got caught up uh, buying her Victoria's Secret. So, basically, I, you know, I hate going into that store. I hate everything about Victoria's Secret. It makes me uncomfortable. As soon as I walk in there, I got three girls in my face saying, do you need help? I'm okay. I can look at women's underwear and I know what I'm looking for. Like, I don't need you guys to help me find women's underwear. Like, it makes me so uncomfortable. Please don't come talk to me if you see me in Victoria's Secret. That's all I'm saying. And so, my girlfriend's birthday was coming up and I decided, like, I'm going to go buy her, like, a lingerie set from Victoria's Secret because, you know, like, I'm, that's what girls like. It's thoughtful. It's thoughtful. Right. And so I went over to Victoria's Secret, and I wasn't just lingerie set. I think I got her, like, some of the pajamas and stuff for Christmas. Like, oh, okay. like, yeah, know, they have clothes there, too. You know what I mean? Yeah, her birthday's November. You know, Christmas is, like, the next month. And so it's like I can get, like, some PJs and stuff like that. You know, it's like a whole thing. So I went over there, and I'm instantly bombarded by, like, all these girls trying to help me pick out various different things. Like, what's your girlfriend's shape? Blah, blah, blah. Like, I, I know what I'm looking for. So I get in there. I pay for this stuff. But my ex-girlfriend was so crazy that she had logins to, like, all of my bank accounts, X, Y, and Z. And so one day when we were out to lunch, I could tell something was really pissing her off. Like, mind you, her she birthday saw the her birthday's in my, let me say, it. her birthday was in like two weeks. And so she's like, in her head, she's like, it's a little bit too far ahead. This, and I don't know what she was thinking, but she brings up the fact that she was looking at my bank account statements and saw that I was in Victoria's Secret shopping. And so this girl ruined a whole Sunday afternoon dinner because she was upset because she thought I was taking my side chick into Victoria's Secret and buying her stuff. Mind you, I worked at Starbucks and had a football scholarship, so it wasn't like I was like rolling out the dough, but she was thinking that I was taking my side chick to Victoria's Secret and buying her stuff because I didn't go there just once. I went there twice because the First time I went there, mind you, I got the lunch ray set, and I was like, maybe I should get her something else because Christmas is next month. I went back mm -hmm. and I bought the PJ set. So she saw I had two different transactions at Victoria's Secret, and she knows I hate going to that store. So the fact that I went in there twice and it was sus. And I couldn't tell her why I went in there. It's a birthday present. I was just like, I was just in there shopping. They don't have guy stuff in there. We don't want to be like, yeah, I was shopping for your birthday in there. You know what I mean? So it was just like this whole awkward I don't like know lunch. Why she wouldn't just like think of that. Yeah. Because this bitch was so crazy. She checked the vegetation on my tires to see, like, where I was going. Yeah. And matching it to what I said I was at. You know what I mean? Like, this bitch was so crazy that the fact that I couldn't even buy her stuff at the store without her having a problem was insane. So, like I said, guys, don't date Scorpios. And if you're a Scorpio out there, stop checking their bank accounts. I get it. You're possessive. I get you got all That's crazy. stuff going on. But, yeah, crazy girl. Well, with that, guys. Anyways, we'll end the podcast there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to the number one podcast in the world. I'm your host, Chase Damore. And Gabrielle Moses. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.